Okay, so let's talk about the integrated direct laser sublimation unit for the nanophase. I'll show you why we developed this, how it looks like, what it can achieve, and in the end, how do we plan to continue. So if you have seen some of our previous webinars, you know that the nanophaser has an ultra sharp heatable tip that can be heated up up to 1200 Celsius and has diameter of the apex that can be down to 4 nanometer. This tip can be used for patterning, like you can see here, and in situ imaging, as you can see here. This allows for 3D patterning because we can control the depth at which we push our tip and then with the in-situ metrology we can check how the patterning is going and adapt the patterning parameter to match the target topography. The nanophraser can also write with very high resolution due to the very small size of the tip. Since we can image what you have on the surface and write with the same tip, we can do what we call markerless overlay. Moreover, since we are, we are not bombarding the substrate with the high energy particles, we do not damage any sensible material that might be on the surface. And here on the right, you can see the nanophase explorer and its specifications. So this is really good to do what you can see here on the left. So it is very high resolution structures, very accurate overlay, and 3D structures with unprecedented vertical resolution. The nanophraser is also really good to do what you can see in this image here at the bottom left. This image comes from a publication from Xiaori Gen from Elisa's Redos Group in New York. And it is an example of overlay and low damage of sensible materials. So here basically they had a flake of 2D material which was buried under the resid stack. With the nanophraser they could image it, see the flake and pattern the electrodes on top of it. Not only this central part of the device was fabricated with the nanophraser, but the whole device was made with the nanophraser. This is a very good example for us because it shows how really with the nanophraser you can do everything. Shari said that it was taking him 10 minutes to fabricate each of these contact parts, which is very impressive if you think that this is a scanning probe technology. But I'm sure he wanted to do it even faster. The idea that we had for a long time to help our users to fabricate device faster was to integrate the laser writing system inside the nanophraser, which could have been used to write this lower resolution big area of devices. So the first prototype of a direct laser sublimation system integrated with the thermal scanning probe lithography was done in collaboration with the IBM in the IBM research labs here in Zurich. You can see the, pic you can see the picture here on the left. And it was shown that this laser could directly evaporate PPA and so it could integrate very well with the thermal scanning probe lithography technology. The first device fabricated with this prototype was a single electron transistor, actually two of them, that you can see in this image here. This was made, uh, was part of a European project. The part inside this red rectangle here was written with laser, except these two smaller insets, which contain the high resolution part, which were written with the thermal scanning probe lithography. And here you can see a zoom in, in an FM image after etching of those areas. So it was possible to make channels of less than 25 nanometer that after some oxidation could produce a single electro transistor. In 2018, Swiss Lito joined forces with the Heidelberg instrument. So now the nanophraser is part of a bigger family of a direct writing system and all the others are laser writing systems. So actually the idea of, ad of developing this direct laser sublimation unit for the nanophraser became really concrete. And the vision was of combining the high resolution of thermal scanning probe lithography with the high throughput of the laser writing system. So here I just put next to each other the nanophraser and one of the laser writing system from Heidelberg, the DWL 2000 or 4000. And this will be a, very, a combination of these two will be a really nice tool with the nanophraser resolution and the laser writing system throughput. But this is not as simple as it might look like. So we cannot just put a small laser writing system inside the nanophraser as it is. 
and we cannot just put the nano phaser inside the, the laser lighting system. This is because the two technologies have quite different working principles. The nano phaser with the heated tip directly removes the resist, so there is no development needed. In a laser lighting system, you first expose the resist and only afterwards, with the development, you remove it. Also, the resist that we can use in the nano phaser is the PPA, at least most of the time, which is optimized only for thermal scanning polytography. Actually, it's quite unsensible to light, it's transparent basically. Instead, the resist used in the laser lighting system are very well optimized for light, so they have very high sensitivity. But on the other side, if you try to push a heated tip into them, they make it quite dirty. So what we decided to start from is to build a unit similar to the prototype which was developed in collaboration for IBM for a direct laser sublimation of the PPA into the nanophase. In this way, we have a tool that can do the high resolution patterning with the tip and can also do the in situ metrology and imaging and can, can write the micrometer size structures with the laser so and this can have a throughput that is supposed to be 100 times higher than the tip of course we keep having the reading capability of the nano phaser so we can do the metrology as i said before we can do the overlay and stitching and since we have this cantilever inside the machine we can do some precise compensation of tilting of the substrate and we can do some compensation of drifts of the system and better focusing and so on. Okay, so now let's see how this unit looks like. The optical design was made by our colleagues in Heidelberg. Here you can see a drawing. There is an LED for the illumination on the back, a coupler here for the fiber bringing the laser light. On the other side, there is a camera. So we can produce an image, uh, field, uh, field of view is around one millimeter to one millimeter in the nanophaser software. <clears throat> and then there are mirrors to reflect the beam to the objective, which is here. This is a front view of the laser writing add-on on top of the nanophaser. So this on top is the, op the laser optics, whose drawing was shown before. And this is the substrate here. And we focus the laser beam on the substrate around 100, a few hundred micrometer in front of the tip, which is also here. So the laser that we use is a current a continuous wave, 400 nanometer laser with the, gives a, with a max power of 300 milliwatts. The numerical aperture of the objective is 0.3 and we obtain a beam waste of one micron. We also have an autofocus function, so the laser is focused automatically on the surface. There is an automatic estimation of the tip to laser spot offset, so that it's easier to align structure written with the laser to structure written with the tip, and vice versa. And then we, the system, of course, comes with all the laser safety interlocks that you need for safe operation. Okay, now let's see what this system can achieve. First, we did some exposure tests. So we were writing with the laser and then analyzed what we wrote with the imaging capability of the nanophaser. You can see the nanophaser image here on the bottom left. So in the left part, we fix the time, the exposure time, and change the power. Here you can see the powers in milliwatts. We always wrote a line, which is only a marker, where there are a lot of pixels next to each, to each other, so we always write something, and then a dot next to the line, which is our measure. As you can see, at lower power, we don't write anything. As we move up at higher power, we start writing and we write deeper and deeper. We did a similar experiment by keeping a fixed power and changing the exposure time. Here on the right, you can see the results of this test. And we have the depth plot versus the laser image, which is nothing else than the power time to time. As you can see, we can have some control on depth at which we write. Another interesting point is that the patterning doesn't start at zero energy. We need to overcome a certain dose before the patterning starts. Uh, now, let's see, we test the resolution, yes. So when we designed the system, we had in mind the resolution of one micron, and this is what we specify. 
and this resolution can really be easily achieved once the system is decently focused you just start writing and you always write better than one mic we try to push the resolution by optimizing the parameter and we could sh achieve what is shown here is like 400 nanometer lines and spacing for the moment this is the best result we had with our machine we also try to see single dots how big they are you can see here in the zoom efm image they end up every diameter of around 200 nanometers so actually it's smaller smaller than the beam waste and this is we think is due to the this is we call it non-linearity of the pattern so we need to overcome a certain dose before we start pattern and because of the shape of the beam the higher dose in the middle this non-linearity in the patterning produces an effect that is a kind of proximity effect that you can see in this image here at the top so here we made a few exposures at different distances from each other like single dots uh, as you can see as long as the pixels are more than 800 nanometer away from each other they are independent so the their depth doesn't change as a function of distance but when we, they get closer they start to merge and they end up producing a dot which is much bigger than the two dots when they are far away from each other to better understand what was going on we tried to make a second exposure in the same place and you can see the result here now with the second exposure we see that also in this in the kind of isolated dots so the one which were quite far away from each other we remove much more material than the one we removed with the first exposure so what we conclude is that the first exposure cause some kind of non-volatile modification of the PPA which allows the second exposure to be much more efficient in a way we think we need to activate the PPA before we can remove it to the laser another effect that we observed is that the interference between the lights that gets scattered at the interface between the various layers in the substrate can modify the efficiency of the patterning actually if you have destructive inter interference in the PPA you have very difficult patterning if you have constructive interference you have much easier patterning here you can see a calculation of the amount of energy that we expect to be dissipated in the PPA as a function of the thickness of the layer of list of resist under the PPA as you can see we expect maximas at around 40 nanometer minimas at around 100 nanometer and then this will repeat we made some experiment to check if this is true and actually we confirmed this prediction you can see this in the image here below so we probably plot the energy that is needed to achieve the 30 nanometer deep patterning in PPA so complete removal of the PPA versus the PFGI layer thickness so the thickness of the lift off resist stack uh, layer as you can see at these around these thicknesses we need much lower energy as expected then at this thickness here this 100 nanometer which corresponds to the minimum of the energy which should be dissipated in the PPA as we increase again the energy to 150 uh, sorry as we increase again the thickness of the PNG layer to 150 nanometer we go to the next maximum and again we need little energy to evaporate completely the PPA okay now let's see a demonstration so here I was just patterning one of these Heidelberg logo here I load the design and start the patterning here you can see the laser light on and the sample moving fast under the laser and then the patterning is done this is around 40 micron times 40 micron and was done just in a few seconds so after patterning this logo I went at the same spot with the tip and image it you can see here the AFM image obtained with the nano phrase you can see actually the single pixels of the laser here because I was using quite a big pixel size and then to show the that we can write in the same tool with the tip and with the laser I decide to write like a small Heidelberg instrument logo here below the, the big H and here you can see a, a zoomed in image of this logo this was written the tip and here you can see a further zoom so now this shows that we can in the same tool write the sub 100 nanometer resolution features actually 25 nanometer of pitch with the tip and we can write the coarser structures with the around one micro resolution or even a bit less with a laser okay now finally let's see one more realistic example this is a dummy device is 500 micrometers times 500 micrometers 
and it was written with a laser and it took just a, a few minutes. This is just to repeat once more how the laser increased the throughput of the nanophaser for the low resolution part and of course you still have all the features of the nanophaser for the high resolution part of your device. So now we are at the conclusions. I will show you our direct laser sublimation unit for the nanophaser. Actually now every nanophaser explorer has this unit by default. This gives higher throughput for the micro features and preserve the tip for where it's needed. So the high resolution, the 3D precise stitch and overlay and low damage patterning. Of course, we still have a lot of ideas of how I want to go on with the laser. One idea is that we want to see how well we can control the 3D patterning with the laser. Another very interesting idea is that actually we're already working on this. We want to increase the PPA photosensitivity with the use of photoacid photo generators. This is, looks quite promising and it would be really cool if you could achieve a sensitivity equal to the one of the standard laser writing resist because then we could uh, increase the throughput of our laser a lot and really make the achieve the initial vision. So I have a tool which has the full throughput of the most advanced laser writing system and the resolution of thermal scanning probabilitography. 